These are dark times, where the law has been reduced to rubble, and it's up to us to restore it to its former glory. Yeah, I know what you mean. It looks like YouTube finally decided where they stand. Yeah, it's for this very reason I returned. Time to bring it to an end. What's up, everybody? This is the Act Attorney here, and a lot has happened since we last spoke regarding Quantum TV. No doubt many of you are curious what's been happening behind the scenes and if I plan to make good on my promise of getting his channel rightfully terminated. Spoilers, I do. I was in talks with people at YouTube for over a month, and I didn't want to reveal anything until this video was close to completion. I can now confirm, after conducting a thorough investigation, that YouTube has officially found Quantum TV, completely innocent. What? They decided he had violated no community guidelines. How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. And also found that his numerous copyright claims and takedowns were considered a fair request for review, meaning YouTube believed he had a fair reason to file them. We'll get to why all of this is complete later. There is literally a 100% chance he gets his channel deleted. Like, I, I don't even think it's 99. I feel like this is a guarantee. I thought so too, Osman. I thought so too. It is a grim day for us all as we now enter the dark age of YouTube. I've never felt more disgusted or ashamed of this website, particularly the teams in charge of copyright and community guidelines. So many people have been threatened and harassed and bullied by this guy who's been doing this for four years. The false takedowns, the hate speech. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears that today justice will not be served for justice has no place on YouTube anymore. I think it's time I hang up my coat and stop fooling around with this lawyer business. You know, let's face it, we lost. I mean, I'm kind of abused by this, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's funny. You guys literally sound like abuse victims, right? At the end of the day, they'll take something. They eat some penis victims and shit every day. L plus ratio plus maidenless. OBJECTION! at you, you're pathetic! Who, who said that? Me, Mudahar here. Who else? I can't believe you're just gonna sit there cowering and sniveling in a corner. Are you a lawyer or just a big old pussy? I, I'm the act attorney. Well, it's not over. Act attorney, not by a long shot. Wipe those tears because the only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. You're, you're right, Mudahar. You're goddamn right I'm right. Listen, don't you hear them? Those voices out there crying for justice? I support you, Ackman. No love for copyright abuse here. And when are we playing Elden Ring? Just get on your Xbox. I know you have one. Act man, you know what I'd love more than my brand new silver play button? Seeing Quantum TV get banned again. I cannot wait to see this guy get banned for being a copyright abusing bitch. The birds and I support you, Act Man, in your quest to get Quantum TV removed from YouTube. It will be a better place without him. Bitch, you were reviewed. You got reviewed. All right. And so, because of the danger that he poses to the channels of other creators, and his threats made to the families of his critics, 
I do not think that Quantum TV belongs on YouTube. I will see to it that the hammer of justice is brought down upon the wicked. If YouTube won't do anything to make this a better platform, then the rest of us will. No, this verdict does not mean Quantum TV is innocent. Far from it. In fact, it means something much, much worse. I'm not gonna put it in a bottle and breastfeed it to you. Through my research, I am able to provide undeniable evidence that Quantum TV has violated the following community guidelines on multiple occasions. External links, hate speech, cyberbullying and harassment, additional policies, ban evasion, copyright, harmful or dangerous content, child safety, and spam, deceptive practices, and scams. This whole video will be showing you the proof and also show you how YouTube is either unwilling or no longer enforcing these community guidelines. And I plan on showing just how wrong they are using YouTube's own fucking words. And I especially don't condone looking up other content creators' personal information. Don't stoop to Quantum's level. YouTube's decision to not ban Quantum was made as a result of three things. Poor investigation skills, a hands-off approach, and a lack of any common sense whatsoever. I'm making this video not only because it's personal, but because I truly believe in what YouTube is supposed to stand for. Does YouTube side with justice or evil? I suppose we'll find out soon enough. It's like if you're in a group, it is your responsibility to ostracize your own extremists. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. This guy is an extremist. He's a nutball. He's a bozo. Would you believe that in the copyright abuse video I only shared about 10% of the archives I had on Quantum? I intend to share the rest with you today. So I ask once more, blue pill, red pill. Ah, who, who am I kidding? I know which one you're gonna pick. You're red pilled and based. Now we have Ackman's fans sexually harassing me, doing strange things like putting cucumbers in my mouth. All rise for the trial of Quantum TV and YouTube versus literally everyone else. Ackman, your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Quantum TV is guilty of multiple offenses, and I intend to prove that he needs to be removed from the platform to maintain its integrity. He really loves talking like he's some big hot shot that can really do a whole lot. And in the end, it's really just ego. That is a bold claim indeed. But why is it your duty to pursue this if YouTube already has? A fantastic question. I believe Matt Koval, creator liaison for YouTube, should take the stand. Mr. Koval, please testify on YouTube's creator responsibility initiative. As a YouTube creator, you're sometimes seen as a representative of the platform and a member of this giant influential community. It becomes your responsibility, along with every YouTube creator, to help us keep the ecosystem healthy. If the things you do and say as such a representative are really reckless, dangerous, inappropriate, on video or not, you can actually cause damage to YouTube and its millions of creators. Why? Because YouTube and advertisers don't want to be associated with that level of craziness. Your Honor, I have no objections to this testimony. I simply believe it is important context for the rest of this video. All this drama has escalated so far beyond what anyone imagined. Fun fact, did you know that when Quantum TV struck Mischief's video, it had 930 views? 930 views. But it got personal when he looked up my family's information, contacted my mother specifically via phone call, and harassed and threatened her. My mother? No! What have you done to her? She can confirm the call he posted was real, although two minutes of it is missing from the start. I'm calling on behalf of Quantum TV. Your son has been making a string of uh, really defamatory posts. Hello, is this Ackman's mother? Yeah, this is Quantum TV. Uh, your son's been bullying me online. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to avoid any kind of litigation or lawsuit by talking things out, so... Is there any way I can get in contact with him? Your Honor, next I would have two representatives from YouTube testify on their harassment policies. Hi, I'm Michael Grosak, Global Head of Content Policy at YouTube. And I'm Matt Halpern. I'm Vice President, Global Head of Trust and Safety for YouTube. Harassment of anyone affects everyone. Malicious acts are abusive behaviors, and we take these very seriously at YouTube. This means threatening someone, whether it's subtle or obvious. OBJECTION! You say you take malicious acts 
very seriously at YouTube. If that's the case, then explain the next three minutes of this video. Take that! And, and you don't understand that this level of fanaticism is dangerous. And, and you might end up hurting somebody. You know, you think that this behavior doesn't have consequences. One day, and I'm, I'm making this video because one day maybe you guys might actually get someone killed. And I mean that. Threatening someone, whether it's subtle or obvious. Hopefully, through your actions, one day you don't get somebody killed. But it crossed the line into harassment when the creator made veiled threats. Again, veiled threats, as you guys like to say, is not something that we do here on YouTube. You goddamn liar! Malicious acts can also mean threatening someone's privacy. That includes stalking and doxing, which means releasing someone's private or identifying information online. People come to me, they send me all kinds of personal information on you. 90% of it, I have no interest in. I know about all of your family members at this point. I don't care to know that. I know so much. Threatening someone, whether it's subtle or obvious. There's something down there. There's quantum TV. But some people take it too far. They lead to hacking. They lead to real world doxing. I called his mother. Threatening someone, whether it's subtle or obvious. And some of you start doxing and sharing personal information. I called his mother. And then you go even a step further. You find people in real life. Because how dare they find you in the real world? That's creepy. No, it's not, dude. I called his mother. Stalking and doxing. No, uh mouse or anything behind this and yes i know your address yes i know your phone number yes i know your mother yes i know your brother your father your next of kin stalking and doxing don't don't think i'm playing around i called act man's mother to get a hold of him to let him know the kind someone, of damage he was caused. subtle or okay? obvious i'm not fucking around with this threatening someone whether it's subtle or obvious if he's available to talk or, or, you, or you're the guardian for him I'd imagine I can send over a cease and desist letter from my lawyer. And you're literally lying about your mother being threatened to send more people after me. I'd rather not drag a family through the mud given the times and the current status of the world. You understand what I mean? Like, we all have families and stuff we're trying to accomplish. So I'm not trying to derail anybody's livelihood. Threatening someone, whether it's subtle or obvious. How many times did I actively ask his mother to pass me off to him? Because truth be told, I never wanted to talk to her in the first place. Your, your son is causing trouble for me. And that's the whole reason for this call to begin with. I never wanted to talk to her in the first place. Your son is causing trouble for me. And that's the whole reason for this call to begin with. Stalking and doxing. I'm trying to find Act Man. So what, what would you do as a human being if you're trying to find somebody who is hiding behind a stage name, the Act Man? Well, you're going to look into them. Threatening someone's privacy. It's not real hard to find him at all. You can Google him right now and you can get all of the same information I did, it's not hard. I promise you, if you look into the Act Man right now, you will find his full legal name. You'll find, just type Act Man. You look for Act Man's real name. Like, actually try to find people, you will find it. It's not hard. YouTube and advertisers don't want to be associated with that level of craziness. You're a liar! You're a liar! I think it's pretty obvious what he did to my mom was malicious in intent. Because he obviously had no good reason to contact her over me. In fact, he refused a voice chat with me and Mischief on his live stream, and again, refused a voice chat in private DMs. Objection! It wasn't until my power of a, an apology video came out where I mentioned that I contacted his mother, where I guess he got embarrassed and upset by that. Ask him why on the 23rd, after the phone call that I've published, why he said he was moving on, and then only after I made the power of an apology video that he'd come out saying he was threatened. You guys really need to look at things full picture and stop playing games here. Objection! Why did I say I'm done with the drama and then do a 180, you ask? Initially, I was so shocked you took it to that level. I thought, this isn't worth it. I'm not going to talk about him anymore. Wipe on my hands. Moving on. You went public with the knowledge that you contacted her and made a community post about it. People started asking me. I tried to ignore it. And then the next day, you posted a video verbally confirming this. I, bro, ask him. Don't, don't think I'm playing around. I called Act Man's mother to get a hold of him. This court does not approve of calling anyone's mother. No, you didn't want this to end. You didn't want to be left alone. With your copyright takedown attempt failed, in your twisted mind, you thought you had no other option but to threaten my family in an attempt to silence me, and it almost worked. But you just had to brag about it. You had to talk about it publicly, and that's why this video exists. <laughs> but the good news is you're now a household joke amongst all of my family. <laughs> People gave me crap for this tweet, but 
I was shocked, okay? And I'm not taking chances with lunatics. You know what's not going to happen? A situation like this. Oh, hi, Quantum. Thanks for showing up to my house uninvited. Oh, yeah, sure. Come on in. We're just having dinner. Would you, would you like a beer? Wait, wait, why are you stabbing my mother in the throat? Oh, no. I totally didn't expect you to do something like that. Right? Because, let's be real, Act Man is saying that I am threatening a woman here, okay? This is a serious crime. He was so enraged by it, he never reported it to the police once. Yes, I contacted my local police department, filed a police report. Yes, I contacted a litigation attorney. Yes, I called the police department in his county. And I had to do all of this because of him. This is the type of shit that can happen when YouTube refuses to enforce their rules. When they allow someone like Quantum to have a platform for four more years than he should have. Looking through YouTube's community guidelines, they actually don't have any rules against harassing, doxing, or threatening violence against other content creators' families. Objection! Then, of course, there's the infamous tweet, We wouldn't want our families to get hurt or involved in this. Like, this is such bullshit, bro. In the same videos you bragged about doxing my mother, you also made comments like, One day, maybe you guys might actually get someone killed. And I mean that. Hopefully, through your actions, one day you don't get somebody killed. I reached out to your mother to convey the severity of real-world harm. The act mom should have never been involved in this at all and it's caused real emotional turmoil for me and my family. Dude, even if you hate my guts, right? Photoshop all the cucumbers you want into my mouth. But while you literally sit here sucking on cucumbers in a very provocative way, you talk shit about me nonstop. Just don't involve my family. Don't be Quantum TV. Those videos are still up, by the way, fully monetized. He's profiting off of harassment with YouTube's blessing. One final note, my copyright abuse video was uploaded at 1046 AM. Quantum TV called my mother 40 minutes after it was uploaded. There was no hesitation. Our next order of business, ban evasion, as I believe this is where the conversation should have started and ended. While I briefly touched on this before, Your Honor, I request YouTube testify on their policies around ban evasion. Account terminations do not expire. Users whose accounts have been terminated are prohibited from accessing, possessing or creating any other YouTube accounts. If your termination appeal has been rejected, then you will not be able to recover your account. If your channel has been restricted due to a strike, you must not use another channel to circumvent these restrictions. Hold it! Would you say YouTube is pretty consistent with enforcing this policy and your community guidelines overall? Yes. We enforce these community guidelines using a combination of human reviewers and machine learning, and apply them to everyone equally regardless of the subject or the creator's background. OBJECTION! Apply the community guidelines to everyone equally. Doesn't that sound a bit... off? What do you mean, Mr. Act? I'd like to direct the court's attention to this man. But... That's Leafy is here. Indeed, he has made at least three attempts to return to YouTube after his initial ban. The first channel, Weefy, was made in 2020 and shut down shortly after. September 3rd, 2021, Leafy's new channel, Lucky, was banned. It had been up for just five days. On January 14th, 2022, Leafy's third new channel, LeafyCast, was terminated four months after its creation. That sounds like pretty swift and decisive action to me. Yes, it sure does. And yet, Quantum TV has been evading his previous ban for the last four years. Well, YouTube, I'd say the only thing that's consistent with your policies is the gaping hole in your testimony. Absolute nonsense. Order, order, I say. Mr. Ackman, you will explain yourself to this court. We know Quantum is evading a previous ban because he admitted himself on multiple occasions back in 2018. All YouTube would have to do is investigate this on their end to validate it. Objection! So I'm sure you've probably heard the talking point that quantum apotheosis was terminated. I mean, no matter what people say, those are just words. That's literally just hearsay. OBJECTION! But I asked the court if his channel wasn't banned. Then all these posts from 2018 were faked, right? I have been banned from YouTube for two weeks. Come to Quantum's controller core to watch videos until time runs out. Snowflakes won't win this one. Take that! 
Why would you direct your Facebook followers to a different channel if you weren't afraid that your current one would be taken down? <laughs> Where are the contacts for this? And then you made another post the next day because I just can't let them take my channel without a fight. And then, why would you lie on June 30th about the appeals you made to YouTube and admit that you were banned for hate speech? Why would you write up a fake appeal for a fake channel termination and go through the trouble of forging screenshots? I agree, this is quite compelling evidence. Well, Quantum, let's hear an answer. This is a personal vendetta. This is a vindictive, manipulative tactic that he's using to fool everyone around him into attacking one person. Quantum TV, this guy right here. Something doesn't quite add up for me, Quantum. If the court would kindly look at this video feed, as you can see, this video is titled Big Thanks to Quantum Apotheosis. It was posted on October 18th, 2018. And if we scroll down to the comments, thank you so much for taking the time to mention me. Take that! Why did you post this comment on your current channel and not the Apotheosis one? These are very weird things to lie about, Mr. TV. Even for you! Objection! Are, are you deaf, my guys? Are, are you hard of hearing? I will say this for all the people in the back who are struggling to hear me, okay? In 2018, I had a massive compromise of all of my social media accounts. My PlayStation and Xbox even got hacked. Nothing was safe. Objection! You're right, I'm sorry. All these hacked posts were from someone pretending to be you and pretending that your channel was deleted and lying about that on the Facebook account you had linked on your current account until just recently. Now, I'm going to take it a step further and actually tell you how Quantum has successfully evaded his previous ban. What he does is he creates multiple backup channels and spreads out very similar types of content on each one. He'll constantly rebrand them, change the username, the pictures, and URL to cover his tracks so they can't be linked back to his original band. Your Honor, I request a verdict right now. Very well then. I'm going to announce my verdict. This court finds Quantum TV... OBJECTION! Boy, I am thoroughly tickled. I, I forget what I said, I'm, I'm literally really tickled by this. What are you talking about? I caught you! Stop spreading lies! OBJECTION! Giving a shout out to Quantum Apotheosis channel is a Mr. 4K Upscaler video. You know, it was made four years ago. And it's funny because you expand that box, you expand the description, you go down to the link, you click on the link, and you'll see the so-called banned channel that uh, a lot of people decided to make a stink over. What? What? The reality is, Quantum Apotheosis is in very good standing. There's no way! Order! Order, I say! The next person who speaks in my courtroom is getting thrown out! You don't have any power here. Nobody was taken down by anyone. Well, it seems this is incontrovertible proof that Mr. TV is not ban evading. There... there's a very simple explanation for that. Right now, Mr. TV has four active channels. Quantum TV Vlog, later renamed Controversial Truth, Chemical XJ9, his main one, and this brand new Next Gen Gamers. I'd also like to point out that Chemical XJ9, Quantum Rising, Quantum Realm, and Next Gen Gaming are all the same channel. Remember these names because it's important. I see. And how is this relevant? Your Honor, it's possible to change the custom URL of a YouTube channel quite easily. I suspect he found this video, changed the link of an old channel he had privated to match this one, and is trying to pass it off as if he was never terminated. Well, that seems compelling. But do you have any evidence to support this theory that he has been changing the URLs? I... I, uh... This is the shit I gotta deal with with the gaming community? I swear, this is why people don't like you fuckers. It's just unequivocally a lie, made solely to slander somebody that they don't like. It's... it's no use. I... I can't prove something like that. Very well. I'm going to announce my verdict then. This court finds Quantum TV... HOLD IT! Y your Honor, please wait. Uh, Mr. Act, you better have a good reason for interrupting my verdict. Now, do you have proof to refute the witness's claims or not? Can I prove something like that? 
Do I really have evidence that he's been changing his channel's URL? Are you a lawyer or just a big old pussy? My entire case is resting on this moment. If I let up now, this hateful copyright abuser will get off scot-free. I have to think about this from a different angle. I don't need to prove that quantum apotheosis was banned. I need to show that he changed the URL. Mr. Act, if you cannot demonstrate the validity of your claims, then I'm afraid this wild goose chase will be nothing more than conjecture. Your Honor, I have proof. And, 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 uh, this is how you respond? You steal videos and you, you, you lie through your fucking teeth. OBJECTION! Mr. TV, the only thing coming through my teeth are straight facts. This evidence will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're violating YouTube's policy on ban evasion. And here's my final proof! Take that! But... That's, that's the evidence Mr. TV just submitted as proof that he isn't ban evading? Quite the contrary. This link Quantum is using to prove his innocence is the very thing that will seal his fate. I don't know what the hell that's all about, but that's some weird language going on there. It's just all hearsay. Have you ever heard of the Wayback Machine, Your Honor? It archives websites across the internet to preserve their contents as they were at an exact point in time. These links can't be faked. Quantum claims this link leads to the missing channel apotheosis. So I asked myself, what would happen if I put this link into the Wayback Machine? There it is. Irrefutable evidence of ban evasion. Quite a remarkable coincidence. So what really happened? Quantum Apotheosis was banned for hate speech. Out of fear his other channels would be taken down, he privated next-gen gamers to prevent people from reporting it to YouTube, but forgot about it until just recently. Four years later, to throw off suspicion for his ban evasion, he found this video, made next-gen gamers public again, and changed the custom URL to the one listed in the description to make it look as if Quantum Apotheosis was never banned. If you look at the social blade for this channel, you'll see the account was active throughout May and June of 2018, but it was recently made public again on May 15th, 2022. You can also see there was a massive purge of videos, but before that, what was the last day Next Gen Gamers was active? June 12th, 2018. The day before Quantum TV himself confirmed his other channel was banned for hate speech. And here, Quantum shows in this Discord message how he privated this account for so long. Tell the truth. Quantum Apotheosis was terminated for hate speech, and you've been evading that ban for four years, using three separate accounts this whole time. And that's all the proof YouTube should need to enforce their policies and terminate the rest of your active channels. Admit it! You're ban evading! So now the finger comes back to point at YouTube. You're not enforcing your policies, so either change the rules or get off your ass and do your job. Account terminations do not expire. Users whose accounts have been terminated are prohibited from accessing, possessing, or creating any other YouTube accounts. Since you can evade your previous ban, you know who's gonna be really happy about all of this? Leafy, Alex Jones, and Jay Station. Allow me to be the first person to officially welcome them back. Welcome back, guys. All water under the bridge, YouTube doesn't care anymore. You are the same people probably running over those turtles and those poor raccoons and possums on the side of the road for sport, okay? As people like me jump out of the car and rescue fucking animals. It's quite hard to believe that given the evidence people would opt to defend Quantum, but when they do, it's truly amazing the mental gymnastics they put on display. Some folk label what I'm trying to do as cancel culture. This is not cancel culture, it's you fuck around you're gonna find out. You're gonna try to attack their channel, uh-uh man. Like, that's a- that's the way it goes. Like, somebody does this shit to me, like, yeah, you don't fucking do this. Look, we all say dumb shit on the internet. We take accountability, we apologize, learn, and move forward. But Quantum doesn't. That's the difference. He had a chance to change, and he hasn't. Let's also then pretend that 
you didn't hear me in my public statement video, which is still live on this channel, disavow my hacked tweets. This motherfucker's guilty. Oh, he's lying. Look at him trying to cover his tracks. You didn't disavow it. You just said you were hacked, dude. An easily provable lie. Another thing I hear people say is that actions on other platforms shouldn't factor into his ban on YouTube. Uh, normally I would agree, but this is a special case. We see the same radical extremist beliefs shared across all platforms. It's a pattern of behavior. But it's a pattern of behavior. You see what I'm saying? This is a pattern of behavior. Like, it, it, and that's what I'm saying, is that two points make a line, and a line goes in a direction. Your Honor, I request YouTube testify about their policies on external links. I too would like to hear more on this matter, YouTube. If you would please take the stand. Links that send users to websites featuring content that violates our community guidelines are not allowed on YouTube. Hold it! I noticed you have this disclaimer written in most of your community guidelines. It reads, These policies also apply to external links in your content. Are all of your community guidelines also applied to links people have on their YouTube channels? Our community guidelines, the policies that protect our community, outline what you can and cannot do on YouTube. Any content that violates these policies is removed. Those guidelines include a hate speech policy that protects people with protected attributes across all kinds of content on our platform, from videos and comments to links, titles, and descriptions. OBJECTION! In my last video, I proved at great length some of the racist, homophobic, or sorry, anti-gay things Quantumus said. And I proved that he had all these accounts linked on his main YouTube channel. These were linked on his YouTube account. You know what I really hate, YouTube? This bullshit speech you're giving me! OBJECTION! They're going to run with the fact that their friend shared them hacked tweets. I never even knew there was a backlog for Twitter until they started nastily live streaming it to slander and slam me. OBJECTION! You can't even keep your story straight. OBJECTION! I straight up didn't do the shit, so I'm not gonna own something I didn't do. When I make a mistake, I own it outright and say, you know what, damn, I was wrong. OBJECTION! You expect us to believe that your PlayStation, Xbox, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube accounts were all hacked. You're now also claiming in these messages that people are filing false copyright takedowns in your name, and that someone tried buying a house in your name. If I were you, Quantum, I'd never step foot in a casino, because apparently, you're the unluckiest man in the world. Making this podcast, the whole point of it is, yeah, I get hacked a lot, man. Especially if you ever run into gamers, you know how toxic they can be. Well, if you look at the descriptions of his older videos, you'll find he still has old links to these deleted Twitter and Facebook pages. Your Honor, perhaps I didn't provide enough examples of hate speech in the last video. I'm well equipped this time. Take that! Gay marriage needs to be shut down. Marriage is not a gay right. YouTube and advertisers don't want to be associated with that level of craziness. Here's a screenshot of him linking a now deleted video he posted to YouTube titled Heterophobic Gay Pride Exposed. In mere seconds, YouTube removed my video showing the racism in Black Panther. Liberals are Nazis. 100% proof Black Panther is racist. So many heterophobic individuals show themselves today. I say spread the word. Quantum apotheosis is anti-gay. I'm not sorry. YouTube, you allowed this guy to build a community based around hate, lies, and harassment. Through your brand, through your website. He currently has a link to his Discord where he's saying things like, I wish the most painful death on everyone involved in this massive smear campaign. Gee, where have we heard that before? At the end of the day, go kill yourself, man. You guys are bashing on me, calling me a filthy casual player, and I say, hey, man, go kill yourself. Because that's the name of the game. Go kill yourself. Go die in the game a bunch of times. He said go kill yourself. You just don't do that. What in the woke trash is that? And another thing, Quantum was also using his Facebook and Discord to spread COVID misinformation and allegations of voter fraud in the 2020 election, just for that extra spice. By the way, these two things are explicitly outlawed by the guidelines. Keep in mind, YouTube's policy on hate speech says this. This policy applies to videos, video descriptions, comments, live streams, and any other YouTube product or feature. 
Please note these policies also apply to external links in your content. YouTube, tell us the truth. He's violated your policy on external links? Just how many of your policies do you no longer enforce? How many guidelines does this man need to break before you get off your ass and do something? And they really love to attack my sexual orientation by discriminating against me, making LGBT gifs and memes and all kinds of stuff because this is appropriate behavior. I mean, if the roles were reversed and, you know, they wanted their sexual orientation to be respected and it wasn't, I'm pretty sure they would go screaming, kicking and falling out all over the floor about it. But here I am, a Christian straight man, and they target that as some sort of nasty or negative thing. YouTube claims they take all this stuff into consideration, right? Comments, community posts, videos, external links, your behavior on other platforms factors in. All of this can and should be scrutinized under the community guidelines and as a whole be used to determine if any action is taken. What rules have been broken and to what severity? You can judge the scale of these violations based on the length of this video. YouTube, please testify about your policies on harmful or dangerous content. Don't post content on YouTube if it fits any of the descriptions noted below. Violent events, promoting or glorifying violent tragedies, such as school shootings. Please note these policies also apply to external links in your content. Objection! So if it's not okay to glorify school shootings, then what about mass shootings? What about the second largest mass shooting in American history? Is it okay to glorify that and tell people you wish they were pulse victims? That the world would be better off without gay people? Yes, you're right. Sometimes the woke culture stuff is its exhausting, it's just so tiresome, and I don't like it just as much as you don't. However, there are sometimes, it's the same thing, it's like, uh, it's like people say everything's racist. There actually are people that are legitimately fucking racist. It isn't like, you know, an opinion on the president or something like this. This isn't an actual fucking racist. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is not woke culture. This is a person saying people should get shot for being gay. Like, this is, come on, man. Call a spade a spade. You're not doing yourself and you're not doing people that think like you any favors by making excuses for nutballs. If he apologized, truly tried to make amends, I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. The problem, Quantum TV is still the same person that believes these things. He still thinks the gays are out to get him and force him to have anal sex. I don't want to participate in the anal sex the liberal people tell me to. I mean, this is insane. Let me read this sentence again. I don't want to participate in the anal sex the liberal people tell me to. This is not something that you hear a lot. You don't hear this, you don't hear this very often. YouTube and advertisers don't want to be associated with that level of craziness. One minute someone could be watching Stop the FOMO and the next minute they start having anal sex with their dads. YouTube and advertisers don't want to be associated with that level of craziness. Doing coke and trying to conjure demons with satanic rituals. Satanic influence isn't a joke. I don't want to participate in the anal sex <laughs> that other people tell me to. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to stay strong in the faith of Jesus Christ who died for our sins. God loves you and will prosper! <laughs> Bro, like, can we, can we, can we that was amazing. You guys remember that video Quantum shared of the LGBT activists getting attacked in Georgia? I watched the video and there's no context, it's just a guy getting assaulted in broad daylight. The replies are filled with people celebrating this man, calling him a hero. And would the court like to take one guess? Who I found in the comments section. But here's why I think Quantum's actions matter more than the random comments that are in this video. Quantum is a content creator. He has an audience and a platform, considered a public figure. And if this is the presence he has on the website, it's poison. I find it all the more indicative of YouTube's incompetence that they have what they call protected groups and they allegedly consider harassment towards these groups to be especially vile. 
Next, we don't allow content promoting hatred against people with protected attributes. Promoting hatred can mean things like comparing a group to animals. One of the moments that were really annoying for me is like you had Selena Kyle, which is Lenny Kravitz's daughter, like a half-breed, basically. What is this, Harry Potter? What the fuck? A ha oh my god, man. The only conclusion I can draw from YouTube's decision to not ban Quantum is that children and members of the LGBT community are no longer considered protected groups. Now, you guys are kind of running with like, he's a bigot, he's a homophobe, he's a transphobe. You're just trying to weaponize the gay community against me. Ah uh, yes, we deployed the gays against you. Tactical gays, ready for deployment. Repeat, tactical gays, ready for deployment. I love how Quantum thinks we like manipulated gay people against him. You have done that yourself. And at last, I reveal YouTube's greatest flaw in its methods of moderating the platform. They have confirmed through email and over telephone that they cannot, will not, and do not investigate anything that is not a currently active link. Reason one, poor investigation skills. Some of this stuff is archived on the Wayback Machine, so it, it was there. Even if we have 30 different people send them the same screenshot, they'll be like, nope. Can, it, can investigate this. That's right, all of the evidence I've been showing you, they consider to be worthless. Reason number two, lack of common sense. While it's undeniable he broke YouTube's guidelines on hate speech and external links, uh, YouTube will not do anything about that because he deleted the evidence. And remember, if you delete things on the internet, it's like it never happened and everyone forgets. But they also don't investigate active links either because I sent them the videos of Quantum harassing me, Review Tech USA, Mischief, all the other AV YouTubers, and they disregarded all of those as well. His Facebook and Twitter were archived on the Wayback Machine. Hundreds of people have screen capped the stuff he said. It's real. I'm quite delighted by this news, YouTube. You know why? because I can finally promote my brand new porno. Links in the description. I've also officially launched my neo-Nazi recruitment website. You can find that in the pinned comment. And if you'd like to take part in this next pyramid scheme I'm running, well, that's in the description too. If it's one question I get over and over during the course of this channel, it's why does Quantum TV attack every other YouTube channel? One thing I barely mentioned in the last video was Quantum's harassment towards the AV community, or audiovisual, and these people have dealt with his shit the most. These are channels that make videos in the same genre, you know, about audio, visual, televisions, tech stuff. And I find it all the more malicious when you look at the methods he's used to harass these people in particular. And then you have Paul the Tech Giant come on to our channel, and immediately, I need everyone's attention. Who the hell do you think you are? You are nothing on this community. And, and let me be very clear, you are nothing on this community to be asking for people's attention when I'm speaking. Quantum attempts to discredit every other AV YouTuber in the hopes that they'll go to his channel instead of theirs. He will do this for the most asinine or batshit crazy reasons he can come up with. The funniest being, his opinions on Stop the FOMO, being a Satanist. Those infamous posts are real. And he's made these claims that FOMO is a Satanist across his community post, his blogs, his Facebook, and in his YouTube videos. While it's easy to write off Quantum as being insane in the membrane, I want to hear real testimony from these AV YouTubers. Because I also believe Quantum has ulterior motives in making this drama-related content and why he has playlists dedicated to exposing other creators. It's like anytime there's a slow period in the TV business, he will find someone to attack for some reason, just to create drama and get drama views. Well, Quantum, why do you smear so many other AV YouTubers? Simple, to attack their credibility and show up in search results when people look them up. Even if he's not successful in these attempts to defame people, and expose them as frauds, isn't it bad that he's been doing this for four years? I mean, th these are things that a lot of these people like Be The Installer, Stop The FOMO, you know, the other guys are not going to talk about. If I'm being very frank, they need to know their place. A lot of the people you are watching or getting information from usually don't know what they're talking about. And I 
prove that they don't know what they're talking about. He calls them frauds, sellouts, Satanists in disguise. I'm the best TV calibrator. Only I know what I'm talking about. But here's where the story gets very interesting. I did some research into TV calibration as a profession and calibrators like Ninjitian and Keep It Classy Tech will go to a client's house to calibrate the TV so that it fits the lighting in their room. Every house is different. Every TV is calibrated a little bit differently. It's the same idea of, say, a plumber needing to be in your house to fix your plumbing. I'm sure you know where I'm going with this, Quantum. Mr. TV conducts his TV calibration business in a way that no other calibrator does. Mr. TV doesn't go to clients' houses. He doesn't have clients. He's not a certified TV calibrator. He's a fraud. And so people who appreciate the truth love what I do. And they've named this channel the number one brand in honesty. That's not a self-given name, right? And he's been using YouTube memberships and Patreon to scam people into thinking they're buying TV settings from a certified calibrator. If he wants to sell people settings and just say, hey, these are settings I did, you know, whatever, I don't care. Uh, but when you're telling people that you are a calibrator when you aren't, and that you're selling calibrated set settings and they're not, he will from time to time give an actual definition of what a calibrator is and what calibration is. But he then says he goes against that. But we're forgetting that I don't have 65,000 subscribers for no reason. I actually have a following. But my following is because I attacked people like Vincent Tio and I've attacked the AVS forum because of their dedication to the old ways of the 30-year-old industry standards that don't work. It's like he'll explain that that's setting it to a reference standard, but he doesn't use reference standards. So therefore you are scamming people and lying to people to make money and make the real calibrators and the ISF foundation, everything look bad with your lies. For a guy who apparently specializes in the audio visual departments, he sure has no fucking clue how to balance his audio. On a personal level, I think that bothers me the most, right? He'll upload videos with stereo audio, and then one side will just be so much louder than the other. It's like... And so people who appreciate the truth love what I do. And they've named this channel the number one brand in honesty. That's not a self-given name, right? So you hear how the audio is balanced to the right side? Now, if I drag and drop this effect... And so people who appreciate the truth love what I do. And they've named wow, this look at that. It's almost it's like that took me name. all of 30 seconds to do. Or when he showed the phone call of him harassing my mom, he was like, make sure you turn up the volume. Play the recording back. Turn up your headphones if you got to. Okay, so you can hear the audio. And it's like, bitch, why don't you do that for me? <laughs> why you gotta make me turn the volume up? But it gets even worse because not only is he a fraud, but allegedly he steals other calibrators settings and tries to pass them off as his own. I put up a video two days ago. Within like an hour, his moderator, Anonymous, takes a screenshot of my video, makes this post in their private Discord, gives no credit, says, doesn't say where it's from, you know, just makes this big old technical post about it, whatever. And then later someone asks, is this, you know, from you? And then he says yes, but then edits it real quick to say, well, yes, it's sourced from wherever, something like that. Like that's stuff that happens all the time. So what was the settings that you were going to show, just out of curiosity? So I'm going to throw an image up of this, you know, it's a, an actual reference image that's used to check a television after its calibration and show what it's supposed to look like and then just show, like, the basis of what he does. And you better have a bag of, you know, spicy Cheeto dust ready. So this is basically what it's supposed to look like. What Quantum wants to do and sell people looks like this. <laughs> oh, God. So essentially, he's, well, not essentially, he's literally lying, telling people that he's a, a certified calibrator when he's not. Yeah. So wow. that, that, well, he says he's a master calibrator, which is no such thing. YouTube, he's scamming people. He's using your website to scam people. If anyone here doubts my allegations of fraud, then by all means, ask the real professionals what they think of quantum, and they'll tell you the same thing. The last dish on our plate might be the tastiest, copyright abuse. Over the years, YouTube has made great strides in favor of protecting fair use content. I and many others truly commend them. The platform is way better than it used to be four years ago. However, there still exists one major easily exploitable flaw in the system. YouTube will never punish you for breaking the law and submitting fraudulent takedowns. 
let's take another look at the legally binding document he filed against me and examine YouTube's verdict that this was a fair request for review. Again, I point out he was claiming copyright of a video without sharing the video to YouTube. That's perjury. What he was claiming ownership of was Elden Ring Review. I also point out that he did not fill out the information required and also blatantly lied on this form, saying the video was not from YouTube. And uh, color me shocked because that's where everyone fucking saw it in the first place. This is more fraudulent than healthcare in America. Like, it's a claim made blatantly to harass me. And he gets away with it because YouTube allows people like Quantum to weaponize DMCAs for their own benefit. That's illegal. This is where reason number three for YouTube's verdict comes into effect. A hands-off approach. I don't want to deal with copyright. I, I, I'm not touching it. While I understand that it's, it's impractical for them to get involved in every legal dispute on the platform, YouTube is fully within their rights to determine how they punish individuals that file fraudulent claims meant to harass others. You don't enforce any punishment or repercussions. There is nothing to discourage people from doing it except the community rising up, pointing the finger and saying, that guy's a piece of shit. That's the only thing that discourages people from doing it. I can only interpret YouTube's verdict that these were fair requests for review as a statement that anybody can file malicious takedowns for anything they want. If you made an Elden Ring review, you can submit a copyright strike against anybody else that has. It will be considered a fair request for review, and even if it doesn't go through with a strike, YouTube's wasting their time. That stresses people out, and anybody can do the same to you. Ain't that fucking scary when we're talking about a system that can lead to entire channels being terminated and years worth of work obliterated. Again, they say abuse of this tool may lead to the termination of your channel and under penalty of perjury. So my question, what exactly constitutes abuse of this tool? Quantum TV has also claimed that he only used the copyright ID tool to flag videos, take them down and issue strikes. However, the copyright ID tool does not allow you to issue strikes to other creators. It is simply a means of identifying it. DMCAs have to be manually filed elsewhere. How much evidence do you need, YouTube? You could, I'm sure if you looked back in your own archives to see just how many claims and takedowns he's issued, you would quantify that as abuse. Maybe you could look into the archives of the chat he had with YouTube support where he blamed you for filing his false claims. Now let's take a look at some others. There was a DMCA he filed against Ninjitian where he tried to claim rights for cosplaying as Deadpool. I'm not fucking kidding. And again, even fills out less information. Title of artwork, Deadpool cosplay skit. Type of artwork, photo. Is it a photo or a skit? Where does the content appear? Custom thumbnail. He submitted a takedown because someone, because Ninjitian probably used him wearing his Deadpool mask in a thumbnail. And you can see his rants going off on YouTube for not accepting the claim and taking down Ninjitian's video. I don't know what video this is, but Quantum also threatened this guy for as little as using his face in a thumbnail. He also took down one of Jolster's videos, and I can only assume it was for equally nefarious reasons. He filed one against Griffin Gaming. They had a whole dispute, and of course, Quantum acted like a giant prick, kept changing the goalposts, and you can watch that video to see all the details and private conversations he had with Griffin Gaming. There's also the deleted community post where Quantum claimed someone else was filing DMCA takedowns in his name. Luckily for me, in the screenshots I took, these links could still be seen. And if we type in this URL in particular, here's what shows up. This video is no longer available due to a copyright claim by Quantum TV. So I also sent this to YouTube and here's what they said. We can't investigate these videos because they're no longer available. Yeah, no shit, I could have told you that. But then there's also mischief and it's like, if this is how many cases of abuse we have, how many haven't we seen? You'd think a guy who's this involved with other content creators uh, among disputes regarding copyright that maybe he's the common denominator in all of them. Maybe. 
I'm not talking about music companies or bigger corporations on an individual level when it comes to disputes between content creators. If copyright strikes can lead to the termination of someone else's channel, then they should also have the power to lead to the termination of yours if you abuse it. Everyone is so fucking sick of this bullshit. There has to be some punishment for filing false claims. All right, so quick update. I had a whole section on cyberbullying and harassment. I've had to cut it from this video. I have a flight that uh, leaves in five hours. I haven't slept. I need to finish this video. So I will be doing a follow-up on the cyberbullying and harassment. I did kind of cover that in the copyright abuse video. I suppose you can just trust me on that for now. I hope what I've provided has been compelling. So now let's wrap up this extremely long video. So here's the rundown. By not enforcing their policies, YouTube is demonstrating a profound disinterest in punishing bad apples. People like Quantum TV absolutely do not deserve to have a platform anywhere online when they abuse their position to such a degree. The entire YouTube community has risen up and demanded justice. You are the only one who can deliver it, YouTube. So make your choice. You can stick to your guns, side with hate, or you can terminate Quantum TV and prove you side with the community and genuinely want to make this a better place for everyone. I don't think it's a difficult decision. This whole affair has left me utterly disgusted and speechless by YouTube. They've lied to you, they've lied to me. Today, YouTube sided with hate. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of Pride Month promotion YouTube does, while at the same time giving a platform to a guy who genuinely believes more people should have been killed in the second deadliest mass shooting in American history. It's going to be interesting. I think I've made my case on this matter pretty goddamn clear. And yet, at the end of my last video, everyone was already in agreement they knew he should be banned. And you know why? Because the YouTube community doesn't want to be associated with that level of craziness.